Namaste. Welcome to the 10th session of our course Yoga and Positive Psychology for Managing Career and Life. In today's session, we will continue our discussion on the ways of attaining well-being in yogic perspective. Well-being is reflection of efficient and effective managing self. That is why we are going to have this discussion about well-being in great detail. Yogic perspective of well-being is very much parallel to the Ayurvedic perspective of well-being. In fact, there are some great scholars like David Frawley, they suggest that yoga and uh, Ayurveda must be understood and practiced in sync with each other, in synergy with each other. Many accomplished and very reputed yoga practitioners and yoga teachers and yoga masters, they are found to be great admirers and supporters of Ayurveda. That is why we are going to look at the idea of good life, idea of happy life and we are taking the references from the Ayurvedic perspective because they are very much in sync with the yogic perspective. So, a quick recap as we do in, in, in all the sessions. We we mentioned about the four factors identified in the Charak Sanhita and other Ayurvedic texts. Those are Tattvava Bodh, Indriya Jaya, Sukhayu Hitayu and Dharma Kriya. These are the four ways of attaining well-being and attaining happiness in life. And we also discussed that these four things are connected to each other. And in the last session, we had detailed discussion on Tattvava Bodh and Indriya Jaya. In today's session, we are going to look at the following things. Number one, we will recognize the wisdom as sign of Tattvava Bodh and we will also talk very briefly about the wisdom assessment information. In this session, we are going to explain the idea of Dharma Kriya, uh, examine the different dimensions of Dharma Kriya, interrogate the Sukhayu Hitayu, the, the manifested form of good life or happy life is called to be Sukhayu Hitayu and we are going to interrogate different characteristics, different elements of the Sukhayu and Hitayu and we will look at how these four ways of attaining well-being uh, are also very much in line with the current literature about attaining well-being at workplace. So, these four elements, these four ways of attaining uh, uh, happiness in life, uh, well-being in life are equally relevant at workplace as well. That is uh, my claim and that is what I am going to explain towards the end of the session. So, we look at the wisdom and if you recall our last session, we recognized that Tattvava Bodh is reflected in wisdom. So, wisdom has cognitive, affective and cognitive, all three aspects included in it. The very famous paper uh, um, uh, in a very reputed journal. Uh, of uh, Journal of uh, uh, American Medical Association, JAMA Psychiatry talks about the six factors. We discussed these uh, factors in the last session. Uh, those who have registered for the NPTEL course, they must have received the link for the test of the on the wisdom scale. So, this wisdom scale uh, kept it is a longish one. Initially, it had uh, 114 items and now these uh, this scale is shortened, uh, participants must have received the shortened version. This captures the cognitive, reflective and affective all three aspects of uh, wisdom that is a reflection of Tattvava Bodh. Uh, this is developed by Erdland, uh, very famous scale. So, uh, as you take the scale based on your scores, uh, you must have seen the interpretation of this course as well. So, for that 
uh, and that is only for those who have uh, registered for the NPTEL course. Let us look at the third component uh, about which we started our discussion uh, in the last class and the third component is dharmyah kriya. So, this text uh, talks about harsh meaning happiness, the nimitta, the reason for that, one of the predominant reason for that Charak identifies is dharmahya kriya, uh, acting according to dharma, action according to dharma and dharma is not religion, dharma is harmony within self and with outside social and natural environment. So, following dharma meaning living and behaving in harmony with self, with social and natural environment and our constant endeavor to transcend our limited ego, constantly including so called others in our uh, living in our experience. Uh, so, this, this is in brief uh, dharma is being defined that is uh, we have had discussion about this, this notion of dharma in the previous sessions as well. If we need to look at dharma kriya from this perspective of living this value in lifetime, this can be understood in three dimensions. These three dimensions are dharmic drishti means our perspective, our way of looking at things, dharmic kriya actually the intent or pursuit according to uh, dharmic perspective and dharmic livelihood means action, how we uh, integrate dharma in our day to day actions and day to day dispositions. If you look at the noble eightfold path of Buddha, uh, this eightfold path also talks about uh, samyak vani, samyak karya or samyak jivika. So, it also talks about right livelihood, right action and right speech and we all know that dharma is a well accepted and anchoring concept in the Buddhist tradition as well. Let us look at these three elements in little more detail. What should be the view, how we should look at world, that is the dharmic drishti, how do I look at the world. So, this drishti is reflected in the classic uh, text and which what we call prasthantrai that is Upanishad and Bhagavad Gita and this is also translated in the Subhashitani, the popular uh, text, popular shlokas which convey the deeper ideas in more understandable language, more operational language. So, this Subhashitani is very famous uh, uh, in India and it goes like matravat paradareshu paradravyeshu loshtavat Atmavat Sarvabhuteshu Ya Pashyati Sapandita. So, this is the definition of the one who is knowledgeable. Who is the knowledgeable? The one who look at Atmavat Sarvabhuteshu, who looks at all the Bhutas, all the uh, elements of nature as is of his himself or herself. So, that is the sign of ultimate knowledge who does not consider anyone as other, the, all this world is part of me, it is reflection of myself. This is given in Bhagavad Gita as well as Upanishad. In the Bhagavad Gita, the famous sloka in the sixth chapter says that ikchate meaning that who sees yoga yuktatma, the yoga, the one who is with yoga, yoga yukta, yukta means with and yoga means the one who is with yoga, that atma, sarvatra samadarshana, that who looks at everything and everybody with equanimity. So, that is what Bhagavad Gita says, true yogi is the one which who sees everything in self and self in everything, all living being in God and God in all living being. So, Ishopanishad also says like this, yastu sarvani bhutanyatma atmaneva anupashyati, bhutanyat, so other living beings, bhutanya 
Atma Manneva like self Anupashyati who sees that Sarva Bhuteshu Chatmanam Tato Viju Gupsate the one who looks at everybody all the other organism as self naturally all animosity and all fear will go away in his heart and in his mind. So, these are the signs, these are the uh, examples of dharmic drashti, these are the explanation of the dharmic drashti, how to look at the world. 